Welcome back to the shop guys. I have a fun video for you this week. We have this giant parabolic truck spring. I was told that it came off of an international truck. A viewer gave this to me, so much appreciated. This is by far the largest vehicle spring I've ever seen. And it has a width of about four inches and I want to say it's almost three quarter inches thick right there at the thickest part. It gets thinner towards the end, towards the ends being a parabolic spring. And so we've got about a four by four by five eighths or three quarter thick piece of steel. And I got to say that is actually a deceptively large chunk of steel. Now you might be wondering how we're going to make this into an integral and that means I'm gonna to have to forge this down into a block so it's a little it's a little touchy forging this uh, narrower cross section in comparison so you have to squish it down flatten it squish it down but eventually I was able to work it down into a block that was more of a one two three dimension something closer to that really I cut off too much material I underestimated how much steel was actually here This is actually enough steel to make a nice little hatchet or axe, honestly. So we'll see what kind of a knife we can build out of this here. So let's talk about the steel for a minute. This is reclaimed steel and I'm assuming, I tried to do a little research online, but I believe this is 5160. Don't know that for sure, but I think it's gonna make a cool project. The way it behaved during forging leads me to to be, believe that it probably was is 5160 it stiffens up it's stiffer to forge uh, because of that uh, chromium content so I've got a block here and I'm gonna do a step down on this this block I've already this is the point where I realized that I have more material than I thought I did now I had a chance to watch a few videos from a, uh, a bladesmith in Brazil and I'm gonna butcher his name here but it's uh, Alexand Alexandre Bagunas, something like that. I'm sure I said that wrong, but somebody on the channel here mentioned his channel and I uh, actually learned some neat techniques watching some of his videos. So this is an opportunity to practice some of that. I'm not going to say that I executed them uh, very well or <laughs> like I wanted to, but uh, first chance to use some of these ideas and uh, keep learning. So that was, uh, that was a great opportunity here. But that step down there really helps with the whole drawing that edge down on, on this integral. And from this point, I am simply trying to draw the blade out in both directions, primarily lengthwise, however. And of course, the power hammer is definitely helpful with this. Really, this is too big, a, too big of a piece of steel for this power hammer. Had some short stroking going on there and just you're bouncing that uh, ram off of the uh, <laughs> that large piece of stock, but we got it done, or we're getting there anyways. And one one issue I noticed here is it's easy to start to uh, forge that uh, drop edge back down towards the the uh, bolster, and you end up with a cold shut if you're not careful or just bad dimensions. But pretty easy to put it in the leg vise and knock that back down with the uh, hammer set up there that I was using. So as I'm going here, like I said earlier, I realized that at that particular point that I had more material than I thought I did and I, I was continuing to realize that as I'm forging this. Uh, there's like the spine of this blade at the bolster is probably 3 8 inch thick if not more at this point, maybe 7 16 and uh, I'm just like, okay, well, we, we've got more material. We've got to stretch that out. So we'll see how big this blade gets here. And uh, getting to where I have a, have a profile that I'm starting to be happy with here. And I was able to forge the whole, forge the whole deal in here. And that was a fun process. Nice little, uh, nice little profile there. Cleaning up the, the bolster and uh, spine. Uh, lines here. Overall it went pretty well. It took me a little while to get that all forged. So I had had more stock than I needed of course on the end of that bolster there so I cut that off. 
and now I'm cutting some notches and this is one part that I did not execute quite like I wanted to uh, but this is the purpose of this is that it gives you a nice defined shoulder on that bolster instead of trying to just forge it down it, it's kind of messy and uh, now I'm going to grind an angle here to uh, start the start the uh, ability to forge that right there. So there's clearance is what I'm trying to say. Give yourself some clearance. This is this I, I ground a little too far because I cut my notches a little too deep. It's not it's not a problem as far as having enough material for the tang because we've got a massive amount of material here. There it is, all forged up. This is turning out pretty cool. And I went to flip on the kiln for the normalizing cycle, which is what I'm gonna do next. And it was already reading 111 degrees without even turning it on. So I'm gonna stick this in to heat up for the normalizing while I go hydrate. Since I do have the Rockwell hardness tester now, I can actually get some numbers on what the steel is. But since this blade is not ideal for testing on any part of it I used that little piece that I had left off of the end of the block forge that down into a little heat treat coupon and I'm gonna run that in the same right alongside the blade in the heat treats so we can use that to get a pretty good idea of what kind of hardness we have on on the finished blade I did test the coupon right out of the quench well after it cooled down to ambient temperature and I got a fairly low reading of about 61 Rockwell hardness and the reason for that or an explanation for that is the fact that I use a form of mar quenching on my blades which means that there's already an amount of tempering that has happened before you actually put it in for the tempering cycles and so being aware of that, knowing that uh, I'm not going to get the full hardness potential on on that coupon unless I I cooled it down to ambient temperature very quickly in the quench. The reason I don't do that, of course, is because that's a great way to crack blades. Yeah, that's a whole another great subject to talk about. But all that to say, at the end of our entire heat treating regimen the coupon was at 58 Rockwell hardness, which I think is an acceptable hardness for a big, tough chopper like this. Put a, I got the profile cleaned up here. I didn't do any grinding prior to heat treating. It's all tempered up and ready to go. And put a nice hatchet grind on this big buoy with the slack belt attachment from Beaumont Metalworks. I use it for my axes and hatchets, of course, and then on big choppers like this, it's also very handy. So I had a little bit of straightening issue out of the quench, which also seems to happen to me on 5160 nearly every time. I don't know why it's a little finicky like that, but just warmed up the spine in that spot and got things moved over, not a big deal. Filing down the shoulders on this bolster and you'll see where I mentioned earlier I didn't get the proportions quite right on the tang if I mentioned that but it should have been a little more uh, of a I-beam dimension I guess where it was taller from top to bottom instead of wider but this was a great opportunity to practice some new techniques and I'll be able to execute them better the next time I try them using a piece of desert ironwood for the handle and doing sort of a step drill system. I'll use this uh, 9 16 drill bit to go about two thirds of the way and with a smaller drill down plus a little bit of the burn-in technique have a pretty uh, pretty graduated hole there that um, fits the taper on our tank fairly well. Once I have this all fit up and put together I'll use some epoxy to completely fill the, that void up and uh, completely fill in around that tang for a good secure fit. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the fit up on the on the handle here. I, I kind of tried out a, a museum fit a little bit. I didn't really set myself up well for that in this particular case and I ended up not going with it, but 
it helped me uh, kind of practice the layout a little bit on it. So at this point I could go back and redo the heat treat if things were not working. And so as a last test I chopped through a 2x3 three, three times and it would still take hair off so I think this will work pretty well. Now that I'm confident the blade's going to perform I can clean it up on the with the wire with the wire cup wheel and then we'll get this handle installed. Better to have too much epoxy than not enough, at least that's the theory here. Don't want any voids down in that tang area. Once this handle or once the epoxy is cured enough to be stable, I'm going to install a actually a loveless bolt. You need some kind of a uh, pin or retention device on a big blade like this. I've never used a loveless bolt on a hidden tang like this before, but I think it turned out pretty decent and it's going to work well. It actually provides some additional overall support to that handle. All right guys, this buoy is rough and ready to go. Perfect for your next crocodile or T-Rex hunt if you have any of those hanging around your backyard. I'm gonna show you some pictures in just a second, but please remember, you can support the channel for free, simply liking, subscribing, commenting, and hitting that notifications bell. As always, appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you on the next video.